Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hi everybody. We're going to be talking about Star Trek the Motion Picture. This was the first Star Trek feature film. It came out in 1979. Directed by Robert Weiss, produced by Gene Roddenberry, of course, William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, so on and so forth. I've been on a Star Trek kick, been getting into it a little bit more again. Not that Star Trek Discovery and Picard are helping, because they're not to my fucking fancy. But revisiting the Star Trek Online game, playing a computer or a phone game called Star Trek Fleet Command. So to get my juices flowing, I figured, you know what? Let me dedicate some time to Star Trek because I'm a big Trekkie, big fan, and I love the premise and almost everything about it. So it's 1979. This movie comes out. I am blown away, and it never bothered me that the movie was like a long TV show. I never mind minded the slow pace, the characterizations that were happening. They were me revisiting my friends from the TV show. I've talked about the original series, what it meant to me, uh, the realizations and the honest criticism about how goofy it could have been, but its premise and its uh, message is heartfelt and resonates with me. So it was like watching my old friends come back and I was so interested in what was going on. And even as I grew up, the criticism about this movie never impacted me. I really love the movie. It feels like Star Trek to me, although I could have went with better uniforms. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more of an easier transition, so to speak. But I enjoyed it. The plot is pretty good. I like how Captain Kirk is no longer a captain. He's an admiral. He's like, I think he's the head of Starfleet, uh, division of Starfleet. And it's him, you know, wrestling with certain things. He comes on the ship, is being refit the Enterprise with a new captain. This is a distress signal. And. He uses the, the opportunity to take command, and there's a little bit of that in the in the uh, movie. You know, is he doing it for, because he's the most experienced captain, or does he really not fit in in Starfleet command? Is the at was taking the admiral ship a mistake? Obviously, seven movies, six movies later, it was, and he gets demoted in one of the movies for that. Good for him, but. The characterization, I love it in this movie. Introducing Spock again. Yes, it's a slow pace. It, It's almost got a, a space... Um, it was that movie... Uh, no, 2000 and Odyssey type movie. Has that feel to it in certain aspects. The visual effects, they were testing it telling a grand story this huge cloud and trying to figure out what it is and connecting to it even the reveal at the end the only thing that mars this is that fucking pervert from uh seventh heaven is the fucking captain so he kind of ruins it looking back on it but that happened recently so it doesn't mar the quality for me or the love i have for the movie but this is, to me, Star Trek being launched into the movie universe. It was perfect for me. I could see people criticizing it, though. I understand it. I, I agree with most of it. But there are certain things that's really, you know, your biases. They, they just bypass that because you just love the people, the actors, the chemistry they have. Even though I've talked about before, you find out shit behind the scenes. It doesn't kind of ruin it for me unless you're a fucking pervert child molester whatever the fuck but other than that you know people are assholes they gripe they don't get along i'm okay with that but the i like the plot a lot uh kirk takes over the ship 
He goes to see what's going on. It reveals things about the new captain and his connection to a new or I don't want to say new, a uh, old acquaintance that comes on the ship to help them. Uh, Spock comes to greet them and help them because he's been getting um, connections to this V'ger type uh, probe that's looking for its creator. They did a really cool thing in a video game where they, at the end, they tied V'ger into the beginning of the Borg, which I thought was great. I don't know if they are considering that in the movies or even acknowledge it in TV shows or anything. But for the most part, it is a slow plotting movie, very science fiction-y. There's not a lot of action at all. And I could see that being a failure in a sense, but to me... I could see the writers saying, no, this is what we want to do. Let's move this forward. This is the story I want to tell. And they went with it. They took a chance. I think it's a great uh, um, effort. I really love the movie. But I do recognize its drawbacks. Now, when you look at what they did is removing Gene Roddenberry, mixing things up, and then putting out Wrath of Khan, I guess it's a success for them movie-wise, money-wise, uh, branding-wise. But I don't look back on the first movie with any any bad feelings, any bad vibes, any... Um, I don't remember times where I'm like, oh, I'm watching this again, which you get in certain movies. I, I really, I own it on DVD. I've watched it numerous times. I go back to it. It's not a movie I regret watching again and again. It's got great elements in it. To me, it captivates me, but I could be honest enough to say, hey, look, you know, it's not the, um, it's not the action-packed Star Trek you're looking for, without a doubt. And although they changed the formula for the other movies, besides, uh, well, let's see, the original cast, I think, did six movies. I like them all to a certain extent. Some don't have the rewatchability. So I'm going to say this is still up there for me as for the original cast, the six movies or the top three of the movies. So it's this Wrath of Khan and I, it might be Undiscovered Country. I'm not sure. But like I said, I like them. And yeah, the going back in time with Spock thing and the fucking spade, the whales, you know, okay. I had a little bit of fun in it. You enjoy it. And there's. Uh, things that become part of culture that come from Star Trek, which is great. Star Trek, the motion picture didn't initiate that. So I'll, I'll say that also. It's not the uh, the thing people look back on and say, oh, this has become part of culture, certain sayings and things like that, or the tropes that are in Star Trek. More the original series on television than this particular movie. But the movies after... Um, had a different formula, but I still love this movie. I still get enjoyment from it. Um, this energy cloud and describing it, investigating it. It felt like a really big story from TV. And that's what I was looking for, I guess. Remember, I'm really young when this comes out. I'm growing up with it. I do understand that, um, you know, that, that bias you get. I get it with Star Tre Star Wars, too. You know, I, I could see the flaws in the Star Trek movies, or the Star Wars movies. Although I think Star Wars did a worse job trying to reinvent it. I fucking can't stand those movies. Some of the ancillary products were infected by it for me. So if you look at the Star Trek with Chris Pine, the J.J. Abrams ones, I'm not a big fan of those movies either that much. Maybe Star Trek Beyond is my favorite of them. But The Force Awakens is my favorite, and the rest suck badly. Now, Star, Star Wars has The Mandalorian, which could change things around, but it doesn't have the breadth of variety and the impact on television that Star Trek has. So, if there's a comparison to be made. But when I watch all the new Star Trek stuff, even Void, even Discovery or Picard, which I'm not fans of, the movies, which kind of, eh, you know... They don't, they don't deter me from loving the franchise, whereas the Star Wars, I don't care anymore. It's, it means nothing to me, and I would watch tons of shit. 
you know, fucking Jedi Council stuff on YouTube. I was really big into all the cartoons and everything. So in the long, in the long run, this movie I don't think stands out. But I think real Star Trek lovers do enjoy this movie. It's it almost brings you back to an age where you wish it would go back to. It's like, yeah, we've got the next generation movies and they've changed things and they're okay for the most part. I mean, I'll probably go through them at some point. But I think this uh, has a special place for me. It's uh, something I look forward to going back to and watching more than some of the next generation movies, to be honest. Even with a slow plot and, you know, watching the Enterprise interact with this cloud going into it. Um, it You know, the, the thing is revealed to be like one of our old 20th century um, probes that got lost in space, went through black holes, um, an alien race, messed with its instructions or how it was programmed. And it, to me, it was fascinating. Uh, to quote Spock, I guess. I really would recommend this to people. Yes, just understand it's the original cast first foray into the movies. It's got a slow pace, but in my opinion, some beautiful effects, a really good story, you know, the interaction, the reason for coming back, uh, interested in the changes in Kirk and McCoy and this relationship, they, they've been out in space for 20 years together or whatever the fuck it is. I know there's some discrepancy in the law. Like, okay, so this is, he's been, Kirk has been out in space for t 10 years only or something like that. But anyway, I recommend Star Trek, the motion picture. I enjoy it. I watch it again over and over. It doesn't go in my wheelhouse, like maybe Wrath of Khan and stuff, but I'm really impressed by it still. I think it holds a high critic rating for me. But I can understand why it's not the most beloved of the franchise. Well, give it a shot if you're into Star Trek. I recommend it. Till next time, take care.